Welcome to a new video in my channel and this is going to be a mix of garden railway and a little bit of electronics project because what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to finalize my uh, well one of my latest buildings and um, you know just like with all my buildings I try to add uh, lights exterior and interior lights and for this I'm trying to add sound as well so I don't know how much is going to come through the uh, speakers but um, um, so this is going to be like um, like some sort of office building um, in the uh, uh, like some sort of office warehouse. And um, what I wanted to have, I, I wanted to add some office sounds. So what you can probably hear in the background is like uh, the phone ringing, some computer typing and uh, printing happening, like old style printers. And I, I've done all this. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now. Uh, so I have done all this uh, using a very simple electronics, which is basically here. And this is a very small module, which takes a micro SD card and it can play, well, pretty much MP3s from that uh, small card. And the good thing about this is you literally buy this board for just a couple of dollars. It's available on eBay and in uh, probably a lot of places in AliExpress as well. It can be uh, uh, powered from many different sources. And uh, because it has an SD card in it, it can play a very long audio. So I think my sample, which is this office sound sample, is about a half an hour long. So it's going to loop through that half an hour recording uh, as long as it receives power. And I think because it's not a, like a one minute loop, it's a half an hour loop, it's never going to feel you know, boring and repeated. I mean, of course, it depends on the audio. And everything is self-contained here because you have this small chip which uh, does the playing of the MP3 you, uh, from the SD card. It also has an amplifier, so it drives this uh, speaker that I found in the junk box. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. I don't need anything else. Well, in my case, because uh, I'm powering the lights from 12 volts, I have used a small uh, reduction uh, basically inverter which brings the 12 volts down to sort of the 5 volts this uh, small board requires so let me just bring you a little bit closer so this is the sm small board um, uh, that i just mentioned so it has the small sd card under under the zip tie and this is the power converter module just to bring the 12 volts down to 5 volts and uh, the only reason i had this uh, green board because I did all the wiring on this green board and not directly into, the, into this uh, basically small PCB. And as I said, the speaker is here. So I think this is a very simple uh, project to do. It definitely doesn't cost a lot of money. As I said, this is a couple of bucks. Speakers, it can drive four or eight ohm speakers. So probably you can find some speakers at home that you are not using or maybe some from old radios. And that's pretty much it. As you can guess from the video, this is uh, still a fairly complicated project because there is going to be a lot to involve. I mean, obviously you need to do some very basic soldering just to hook up the speaker and then, you know, solder some of the wires to this module. You have to sort out power supply and also you have to figure out how you can get the audio which is going to be fitted. And so I'm going to talk about all of these, how you source your audio, how you can edit the audio. Unfortunately, it's not going to uh, play direct MP3s, so you need to do some conversion as well. So there's going to be a, some you know, work involved to get to sort of this stage that you can see here. And uh, you probably can see already the timestamps in the video, so I tried to broken up the video into manageable uh, segments and you can just jump to the segment that is relevant for you. And I've also uh, previously just included some screenshots, some stats about this unit because there are things about the sampling rate and the format that I tend to forget. So I just left it in the, in the screen. So if you are coming back to this video and you are just all only interested about the specifics, you can just uh, you know, pause in that part of the screen. Uh, but if I turn the unit back again, what you're going to notice is that the, the light is going to come on. Uh, so the, both the lights and the audio is powered from the same power source. So the lights come on immediately and it takes a couple of seconds for the audio start. And you are going to hear the, uh, the audio. And without the cover, it's quite loud. 
And of course, I left it intentionally loud because, well, obviously the plan is that the roof is going to go on. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm not sure about that, is I'm going to leave some air gap between the roof and, and here. Maybe I'm just going to use some felt uh, or some fabric so the bugs can get in but the audio can get out. But uh, at the moment, if I put the roof on, the, the, uh, the sun gets muffled quite a lot, but without the roof on, it's, it's quite loud. Maybe in the beginning I can just summarize what you need for this project. I mean, I already mentioned this, but first of all, you need these uh, audio player modules. So you can see the, the number here, WTV020M1. Or in fact, I think the better search term, let's say in, uh, in eBay, is WTV20SD. Dash 16p because that's going to give you this particular version and I mean I, it would be pretty easy to tell from the you know the image on the on the listing but this is how the chip looks like so you can see the SD card slot in here so you slide it and open it that's how you put the micro SD card in here and then like so and there are a couple of chips on the other side and there are two times eight, eight pin headers as well and you can solder directly to these pin headers uh, maybe if you need a smaller pro profile you can you can either desolder these or bend them out so that that's basically a unit and i think this usually sells for about a couple of you know us dollars on on ebay uh, maybe 250 or something like that i don't remember if it's been a long time since i bought i think i i still have about five or six of them uh sitting around so this is definitely one unit you need Next, probably I can you know, talk about the speaker. Well, actually, I don't have to uh, talk about the speaker a lot because, uh, I mean, I have driven it from you know, various uh, different speakers, from you know, these really small ones that you can buy in toys, which obviously don't have a good sound, or you, you have seen my you know, general speaker, which was probably like an old radio speaker. So you just need sort of regular size speaker, uh, probably like, I mean, the one that I have at the moment is eight ohm, but I think it also runs on four ohm speakers. So obviously the unit, the speakers. Next is you need an SD card. I don't have an SD card in this one. And probably this is going to be, well, probably or not, that's going to be the most difficult because it can use either a one gig or a two gig micro sd card so definitely don't buy anything bigger and i think nowadays the challenge is going to be to find one which is one gigabyte i think one gigabyte is still going to be plenty of storage for audio so i wouldn't go for anything bigger than that and i was able to find still some listings on ebay where i can get one gigabyte micro sd cards other than that maybe you can look through your old phones or like digital cameras maybe they still have uh, the old you know low let's say low capacity sd card so definitely get one gigabyte sd card and then you need power supply so i bought a couple of examples um, you can see them here the easiest example probably is four sorry three double a batteries so either a double a or AAA batteries. And I think what would be even better if instead of using alkaline batteries, you just use rechargeable batteries. Because technically it says that the voltage this chip works on is 2.7 to 3.6 volts. So if you have two, sorry, three rechargeable uh, batteries, that's three times 1.2 volts. So that's 3.6 volts. So that would be ideal. Maybe the next option besides uh, rechargeable, you know, normal, uh, nickel cadmium or uh, nickel metal hydride batteries is to use lipo batteries and um, I use this um, 18650 lipo cell which came out from my dad uh, laptop and I'm using this uh, charger unit 
this is I always forget as TP4056 and you can buy, usually buy this board which has all the charging and the battery protection circuitry inside I'm going to leave links in the video description basically you have micro SD card here you just plug it in and that's going to charge the battery and it also has all the management you know functionality and you can buy these uh, 18650 holders easily and uh, as you can see the positive lead goes to a switch and then it goes to the B plus and then the negative lead goes into the B minus so battery plus battery minus and then you have the out plus and the out minus which then goes to the audio player unit I mean technically uh, lipo batteries when they are fully charged they give 4.2 volts out but I definitely use this setup with this uh, unit and you know it was fine Maybe it gets a little bit too warm in the beginning, but then, but as the LiPo battery discharges, it, it loses voltage and, uh, um, and then finally gets into a lower voltage. Or what you can also do, which is also mentioned here, that if you are using a free five volt power source, then you can just use two serial diodes. Like any small signal diode is going to be good enough because on a diode, the voltage drops uh, 0.6 volts. So maybe for a LiPo batteries, you can use one and for if you have a two volt power, for, sorry, five volt power source, like an old phone charger or a battery bank, you can just use two signal uh, series diodes and that should bring the voltage down to 3.3 volts or thereabouts. And if you are using a higher voltage like I'm using, uh, maybe because you have like 12 volts for the lights or something else then you can use something like this I'm going to leave links to this in the video description as well and this is uh, a small buck converter and by default this is going to give you 5 volts but then you have some stuff here at the back where you can adjust the voltage um, let me see if I can bring this in shot yeah you can see that it says here 3.3 volts so you need to solder those two small uh, copper bridges. So you solder them together using a, sm a, a small solder blob. And the other thing you need to do is, you can see up here, there is a small trace between, oops. Uh, so there is a small trace there and you need to cut that, that trace. I will try to insert a picture and hear how you should do that. But that basically is going to turn this uh, voltage regulator into regulating anything down from, I think like 16 volts down to 3.3 uh, volts. And the wiring is really easy. You can see positive in. So this is the voltage that you are feeding in. This is ground and that's the free voltage out. This is the, or the positive out. That's the 3.3 voltage that uh, is going to go out and uh, yeah that's the other power source but that's the third option that i could recommend and now let me bring you a little bit closer because this is the reference documentation for this uh, small uh, module how you need to uh, wire it if you are using it in M let's say in the mp3 mode i'm putting mp3 in double quotes because it's it's actually not playing mp3 it's uh, playing some other uh, audio in a different format but this is how you wire all these eight pins that you have here um, for different buttons like you know setting the volumes and and status led and play pose and next and previous and it looks a little bit complicated, but it gets a lot easier because we are going to use this wiring diagram. And that's going to be a basic loop wiring diagram or basic loop playback where the, the player is going to start with the first audio as soon as it powers up. And we are only going to place one audio file in the SD card. So when that audio file is complete, it's just going to start over again. So this is the simplest application that you can have. And if you look at this um, wiring diagram, and you, if you look at the chip, it is actually going to be fairly simple. You see these two middle pins here on the left. So that's going to be your speaker connection. That's where the speaker is going to connect to. The top pin, on the right side that's going to be your positive so that's the voltage which is coming either from your batteries or one of the other options that i mentioned previously and finally you have this is ground on the bottom left and on the bottom right that's that's like the play pay 
sorry play pause button so we are just going to wire them to ground um, directly and that's going to auto start the first audio sample so as you can see here so two middle pins on the left is going to be the speaker top right is the audio and then you uh, connect the bottom left and the bottom right to ground and that's it and i'm not sure how well it's going to come through here because it's already soldered in but you can see the uh, this power supply so this is the 12 volt which is coming in so the ground goes to the middle and then v in is this pin here uh, I mean, of course, it's upside down. So you see the V in here from the second when we turn over, then becomes the second from the left. And I have done the scraping and the connecting of the 3.3 volts. And if we flip around, I mean, everything is going to be upside down. But uh, you can see that, you know, normally this is the orientation. So the two right pins are the speaker pins. And then you have the plus pin here. And you can see that I have just run a cable through the positive out or the V out plus from the regulator board to, uh, to the positive pin. So the top, what is it? If you're looking at from sort of this angle, that's the top left, sorry, top right. And then the middle pin is the ground and I just connected the two lower pins straight to ground like so so that's the right orientation and i just flipped everything around because it was easier to connect it with the speaker which is on the right side and i just use the zip tie so this thing doesn't uh, move around and of course there are terminals in here so i just use the piece of card so it doesn't short out on this aluminium angle that i placed as a sort of like a structure support for this small audio player and that's it Everything is wired up. All I need to do is give it power and it will start playing the audio. It might be actually obvious, but I think it's worth talking about how you're going to get sounds. Um, you, you might have some CDs or, you know, some downloaded music, which, well, not really music, some ambient sounds, which is going to fit for your purpose. But I guess in most cases you want to look for something. And to be honest, I think YouTube is the best uh, option. I mean, I'm amazed how much, you know, stuff sometimes I find here. So, for example, I'm working on two buildings at the moment. So the first one is this office that you have seen. And if I just um, uh, type office sounds, then I get a lot of videos. And as you can see, some of them are like, you know, a two hour long video or a 10 hour long video, four hour long video. When you uh, find like, you know, general office ambient sounds, uh, these might not be the best. Uh, again, I based on my experience, if you have a lot of like, generic background sounds, sort of like white noise kind of sounds. Those will not really come out really good in, in the smaller speakers, especially if they are in an enclosure like a building, which is going to muffle the sound a bit. So I think it's like more crispier sounds like the phone ringing and uh, um, like typing is, is better. And, you know, almost without any uh, ambient music, especially if you are in a garden, there's going to be pl plenty of background music. So you just want to add that sort of like extra um, contextual sounds. But anyway, my other building is, is a warehouse uh, or is going to be a warehouse. And I thought maybe I just want some, you know, warehouse, uh, you know, things moving around. Uh, and there are, you know, tons of those as well. Maybe like, you know, forklift or trucks. Again, here, the general muffled, uh, like AC and that sort of stuff is probably not going to be the best. So this is why I said it's, it's not going to be that obvious. You probably have to look for a lot of different sources. Maybe you use a lot of keywords to look for specific sounds. But again, I think YouTube is probably going to have, your, um, have you covered uh, in this regard. And whenever you find something useful, uh, you just type YouTube to MP3 into Google and you will be able to find find plenty of sites. I think I mostly use this YouTube to MP3 music uh, to just download uh, or convert the YouTube video to MP3. So you have to provide the YouTube link, the video link, and uh, after a couple of minutes, it's going to give you a download button where you can download the MP3. But I think there are applications for that as well, where you can you download YouTube videos, and those usually have an option to download in MP3 only. So if you are only interested in the uh, in the audio portion of the video, 
So this is all I wanted to mention about like how you can source the music or one option how you can source the music. The next thing is you need to edit that music and we just have to do some really basic editing and a little bit of file conversion as well. And I think the first thing that you need is Audacity. And this is a free open source uh, uh, sound editor program. So you can just uh, co go to audacityteam.org and you can just download the well, either the, v, uh, the Windows, the, the Mac or the Linux version. And it's going to look something like this. And once you have done that, you can just, you know, find the clips that you have downloaded. You drag it in and you can start playing. And if I am only interested in some part of this audio, maybe this part, I can select it. I press play and then it starts playing. So this is some old style printer and I don't need the rest of the audio so I can select it and I press delete and then you can delete the rest of the audio so you only have uh, this small part so just a couple of seconds and of course uh, I mean you can save it as a different wave file but you can also do is you have another uh, audio so this is going to be some phone ringing okay so maybe it rings that much you you don't need it to ring again so you can delete that uh, portion as well and uh, now we have two tracks so if you are only interested in one of them you can just uh, you know uh, sorry mute the other tag uh, ta sorry tracks so if you click solo then now you are only listening to this one or you can just mute the other one so this is how you work with multiple tracks and uh, once you have uh, let's say you have this phone ringing and then maybe you want this phone ringing to happen you know two rings here and then maybe further on I, I you want another ringing here as you can see i just uh, selected the piece of the audio i press copy and i move the cursor and i, I pressed uh, paste so Control c and Control v and this is how you easily can create that and that's why i said i would tend to create a really long sample so it doesn't feel repeated and you know just play around with these uh, you know shorter samples that you have just paste them in sort of like randomly across the entire um, uh, audio sample so in my case in the office I have uh, this longer recording which is the um, well that's going to take some time to load but I think this is the five half an hour or maybe a one hour sort of clip so I keep it as a main uh, track and I use these additional smaller sounds to paste in as uh, sort of like fillers or make the original audio a little bit more interesting or if it's missing any of the parts that I need like uh, like a special ringtone that I can add that in and actually you can see that now we are oh that's one and a half hours but now if I zoom in so you can see my you know phone parts and I can just play okay I want some more phone ringing here maybe a little bit one more ring there let me zoom out so this is how you can play with it and then also you can extend that score something like that I don't know maybe something random so now I have a project which has like three audio tracks. Well, it doesn't have to be free, but now I have three audio tracks. Uh, this small player is going to play mono audio, so we don't actually need the stereo audio. So this is already mono. As you can see, it has one track. This phone has, uh, it is stereo. So what I can do is in the track, I can just uh, down mix the stereo to mono and I can also down mix this main track as well. So mix and down mix stereo to mono. This is going to take a little bit more time because this is one and a half hours. But if I do that, okay, now it looks good. Right, let me go back and play again. Okay, so the original track had some phone ringings as well, so I added some more and also the printing noise. And also you can play around with the volume, so if one, you want one of the track to be a higher volume, you can increase the gain here or decrease the gain on the other one. 
but this is uh, how you would get at the end. And of, of course, if you are sort of like halfway in between, you, can't, um, you can save it as a project and then you can open up the project. So it will open up all your tracks as just as you see in the screen now. So one thing I would recommend doing is here, and it probably it's going to take a couple of tries, is even though you have seen on the um, connection diagram that uh, there is a volume button on this player, but actually that never worked for me. So you sort of have to dial in the volume here because you are not going to have you know physical volume put on the on the device. So you either have to play with the gain here or also here in the effect there is an option here to amplify oh uh, maybe you select everything and then amplify so you can do a general amplification of the audio here and you, as i said it's probably going to take a couple of tries until you get to the sort of the volume that you need on your final device okay so let's say this is now ready and that's the final audio that you want to uh, move into your uh, mp3 player. So there is two things that we need to do. And uh, well, the first of, that, first of it is, is crucial, is this device only supports uh, sampling rate up to 32 kilohertz, or at least this is what it worked for me. So here in the lower right, sorry, lower left, where it says project rate, you just change that to 32 kilohertz. And this setting doesn't save with a project, so always remember to set this before you save. And now you can export the audio, so you can export the wave, and then you select the uh, the top option. So I'm just going going to call it test, and then save. And then it says the track the tracks are going to be mixed down and exported as a single mono audio sample which of course it will because the wave doesn't support multiple tracks but anyway this is what we want so now we just have to wait until it finishes the export again it's one one and a half hours so that's going to take some time okay now it's complete and if i go back to my folder then i can see that i have a test wave and this is the wave format and as you can see it's uh 400 sorry 345 megabytes for one and a half hours this is why i said that a one gigabyte card is plenty enough what we need so for that reason you don't have to go for a two gigabyte just you know stick with a one gigabyte uh, sd card and now there is the uh, last step is we need to convert this wave into a format which is called the ad4 and for that I have the AD4 converter, which you are going to find in the in the package. I leave a link to uh, like samples and all these programs in the video description. You can download it as a zip file. And so you just open up a command prompt and you type AD4 converter and then slash E4, which is for the AD4 format. And then you provide your test file, which is the test dot, sorry, wave. And then you also provide the output, which is, let's say, test.ad4. And you press enter. You know, this program is not going to give you any messages. It's probably going to run for a couple of minutes. Well, okay, even less. And then finally, what we can see that uh, our test ad4 file has been created. And it's an even lower size. So again, it's less than 100 megabyte for one and a half hours. And that's it. And now we have created this file so the only thing we have to do is we have to rename it because on the uh, sd card as you can see i have some sample files here which are also going to include a, the file has to be in a very specific name and this name is has to be 000.ad4 so whatever you want to copy to the sd card you just have to rename it to 00048 and of course you don't need any of the additional files because in our example we are just going to have one file and it's going to be played in a loop so again 000 dot, sorry four zeros and dot 84 so you just rename this file um, and i actually have a one gigabyte micro SD card which I just inserted into my computer so if I open up my PC 
I should see this new SD card here. And, and if I look at the properties, you can see that the file system is FAT32, which is not the type of file system that we want, because specifically this uh, SD card has to be formatted with FAT, F-A-T file system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reformat this SD card. So, and just here I'm changing the file system to FAT and uh, I can leave the volume label as it is. Okay, that was quick. So let me just double check. Okay, now it's FAT, the file system is FAT and this is drive E for me and that's it. Uh, so I'm using Total Commander, but obviously you can do this with uh, uh, just normal Windows Explorer as well. So you just copy this file over to the SD card and again the SD card has to be formatted to FAT file system. And actually that's pretty much it. After this you, uh, you know, disconnect the drive or eject the drive and you are just going to pop it in into the audio player and then it should be playing the audio if you have wired everything up correctly. So maybe before I finish this video, let me show, let me talk about a little bit of troubleshooting because, well, sometimes this project is not going to work, so you probably have to, you know, tinker a little bit. And and unfortunately, it is it is not so easy to find issues because, uh, I mean, you know, there is no screen, there is no LED, there is nothing on this device, so you can't really tell what is happening. But uh, I've made a couple of uh, mistakes in the past as well, so I'm just going to go through them. So first of all, um, maybe the, the easiest oversight is that all these SD cards are come uh, formatted to FAT32 and they have to be formatted at FAT file system. So you, if you get a new SD card, you probably have to reformat it to FAT. And that's, that's the first thing that you probably want to test. If uh, that is not working, maybe the issue is with your you know, files. Um, Probably the, the easiest mistake to do is not to set the project rate to 32 kilohertz. So you, your audio files are probably like 44 kilohertz. So this is why it can't be played. Um, so check that. But of course, if you're not sure if your files are correct, then you can just, uh, you know, put, we use one of my sample uh, AD4 files and then play them. And if they pay, play correctly, at least you know that it's, it's not your you know, the your SD card and the wiring and everything is correct. So probably it's going to be uh, something in, in your file format. So just make sure that you're using the 32 kilohertz. And of course, uh, make sure that before you export it, you just uh, uh, done mix all of your channels to mono. So just remember tracks, mix and stereo done to mono. So these are the things. In terms of wiring, I mean, the wiring is fairly easy, so you can't make a big mistake there but again you know check that you have connected uh, both of the button pins to ground and your voltage your know, supply voltage is sort of around like the 3.3 one 3.3 uh, volts again if you are not sure maybe the best is to try with free uh, rechargeable batteries because they would definitely supply the correct voltage um, if you if you are powering up the unit sometimes you can hear very very faint pop from the speakers as the amplifier comes on. So maybe that could be the sign that something is not working. And of course, if you are using, uh, you know, speakers from your junk bin, maybe your speakers are not working. Maybe the, the diaphragm is broken. Maybe the small wires that connect the, the magnet is broken or the electromagnet. So you can quickly check that if you, are, if you just have a coin cell, um, like a small coin cell battery, just, um, you know, touch it into the terminals and that should, you know, pop the speaker. So you should, you should see hear a popping sound as you apply a small voltage uh, to the speaker. There are a lot of things to consider, you know, the file systems, the, uh, the uh, sampling rate, also stereo mono. So uh, these can go wrong in all these steps. But if you follow my guide, you should have this project up and running without any issues. And of course, all the you know different files and the samples that I talked about in this video, you will be able to find as a download link. And that link is going to be in the video description. In case I forget to add anything to that, you can just uh, you know leave me a message and I will add it to the that zip file. I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.